Over the last weeks and months, millions of Americans have joined together in a shared national sacrifice to halt the spread of this horrible disease. The Army built field hospitals and sports arenas and convention centers. The Army Corps of Engineers is great. Over 20,000 beds in record time. The Navy sailed hospital ships to our biggest cities. Life-saving supplies and experimental medicines were rushed to the front lines as we launched a rapid search for groundbreaking treatments and vaccines. We built the most advanced and robust testing anywhere in the world, and we've done more testing than any country anywhere in the world. We suspended dangerous foreign travel. We leveraged our industrial base to produce vast quantities of critical medical gear and enacted a historic $2 trillion relief package. Through it all, we have seen the heroism of our doctors and nurses like never before. These are our warriors. The bravery of our truck drivers, such bravery and food suppliers, such incredible bravery, and the determination and drive of our citizens. Through this unified national endeavor, we have made great progress. You could really say incredible progress. Our experts and scientists report that our strategy to slow the spread has saved hundreds of thousands of lives. Models predicted between 1.5 million and 2.2 million U.S. deaths. If there was no mitigation, could have even been higher than that. And between 100,000 and 240,000 deaths with mitigation, it's looking like we will come far under even these lowest numbers. Thanks to our all-out military operation, and the extraordinary devotion of our people, we believe we will experience far fewer deaths than even the optimistic projection. But there is no such thing as an optimistic projection on death. One person is too many. Our experts say the curve has flattened and the peak in new cases is behind us nationwide, more than 850 counties, or nearly 30 percent of our country, have reported no new cases in the last seven days. Because of our early and aggressive action, we have avoided the tragedy of health care rationing and deadly shortfalls that have befallen many other nations, nations which, wherever possible, we are helping. In America, no person who has needed a ventilator, has been denied a ventilator. We're making hundreds of thousands of ventilators. We've delivered thousands and thousands of ventilators to the states. And actually, it's been an incredible operation. We started with very little, and we ended with a lot. The United States has achieved a significant lower mortality rate than almost all other countries. Based on the latest data, our team of experts now agrees that we can begin the next front in our war, which we are calling opening up America again. And that's what we're doing. We're opening up our country. And we have to do that. America wants to be open, and Americans want to be open. As I have said for some time now, a national shutdown is not a sustainable long-term solution. To preserve the health of our citizens, we must also preserve the health and functioning of our economy. Over the long haul, you can't do one without the other. It cannot be done. To keep vital supply chains running, these chains have to be taken care of so delicately they're delicate. The balance is delicate. We want to deliver food and medical supply. We must have a working economy. 
and we want to get it back very, very quickly. And that's what's going to happen. I believe it will boom. A prolonged lockdown combined with a forced economic depression would inflict an immense and wide-ranging toll on public health. This includes a sharp rise in drug abuse, alcohol abuse, suicide, heart disease, and many other dimensions of physical and mental well-being. Moreover, many patients have put needed medical care on hold, creating entirely new hazards for public health. Our country has suffered. The world has suffered. 184 other countries have suffered. Therefore, my administration is issuing new federal guidelines that will allow governors to take a phased and deliberate approach to reopening their individual states. I've dealt with them now a long time, and we've had a great relationship. Democrat, Republican, the relationship has been good. This strategy is based on hard, verifiable data. I want to thank Dr. Burks for her incredible leadership in crafting these guidelines in consultation with scientists, experts, and medical professionals across government. Dr. Burks will explain the guidelines in more detail in a few moments. And Dr. Fauci has been absolutely terrific. We've all worked together and we've worked together well. They are interested in the health of our country, and we're all interested in the viability and making us truly great again. We took the greatest economy in the history of the world, and we closed it in order to win this war, and we're in the process of winning it now. Our approach outlines three phases in restoring our economic life. We are not opening all at once, but one careful step at a time. And some states will be able to open up sooner than others. Some states are not in the kind of trouble that others are in. Now that we have passed the peak in new cases, we're starting our life again. We're starting rejuvenation of our economy again in a safe and structured and very responsible fashion. Our strategy will continue to protect senior citizens and other vulnerable populations while allowing military and other groups of incredibly talented people to go about their real business and the business that's supposed to be hard at work at doing, and nobody does it better. Our military is the greatest anywhere in the world, and we're so thankful for what they've done. Healthy Americans will now be able to return to work as conditions on the ground allow. Instead of a blanket shutdown, we will pursue a focus on sheltering the highest risk individuals, so important. We're establishing clear scientific metric and benchmarks on testing, new case growth and hospital capacity that must be met before advancing to each phase. And that's each phase specifically in the reopening of our country. This is a gradual process as the caseload in a state continues to go down, restrictions can continue to be eased and come off. Throughout the process, citizens will continue to be called upon to use all of their weapons in this war, vigorous hygiene, teleworking when possible, staying at home if you feel sick, maintaining social distance, sanitizing commonly used surfaces, and being highly conscious of their surroundings. Those are our weapons, and they're very powerful weapons indeed. Governors will be empowered to tailor an approach that meets the diverse circumstances of their own states. Every state is very different. They're all beautiful. We love them all, but they're very, very different. 
If they need to remain closed, we will allow them to do that. And if they believe it is time to reopen, we will provide them the freedom and guidance to accomplish that task and very, very quickly, depending on what they want to do. We are also encouraging states to work together to harmonize their regional efforts. We'll have numerous cases where states have worked and will be working very, very closely together. As we reopen, we know that there will be continued hardships and challenges ahead. Our goal will be to quickly identify and address any outbreaks and put them out rapidly. If the virus returns in the fall, as some scientists think it may, possibly, these guidelines will ensure that our country is up and running so that we can likewise put it out quickly. At the heart of our strategy is the vital role of medical research, especially for therapies that will significantly improve outcomes for high-risk patients and reduce the need for urgent care. This will be tremendously valuable in allowing life to eventually return to normal. At least 35 clinical trials are already underway, including antiviral therapies, immune therapies, and blood therapies in the form of convalescent plasma. You've all heard about some of these events and some of these therapies. They've come a long way. What's been done in the last four weeks is incredible. We will also continue to expand our testing capacity. We have now completed more than 3.5 million tests, by far the most anywhere in the world. Areas of our country that have been hot spots have done much more testing on a per capita basis than South Korea. We've done more than South Korea, and South Korea has done a good job, but we've done more. We will continue to work with governors to advise them on how to conduct both surveillance and diagnostic testing. We have now distributed over 600,000 Abbott ID Now point-of-care diagnostic tests. These are tests that are done on site and within five minutes, you know the answer, positive or negative. In recent days, we have seen a dramatic increase in the number of tests performed by hospitals and academic institutions with more than 120,000 tests recently reported in a single day, far more than any country in the world has ever been able to do. And our numbers are actually going up. As these new and better testing solutions come online, we're seeing this additional capacity reflected in the numbers. For this reason, the number of tests processed in commercial laboratories has dropped from approximately 100,000 to roughly 75,000 tests over the last week. The reason it dropped is because we have so many other tests and we don't even have to go through the laboratories but the laboratories have tremendous additional capacity, and states feel free to use that capacity. Some in the media falsely reported this as a bad thing, when in fact it is a great thing, because it indicates that the states are moving to faster, more local testing solutions, including on-the-spot tests. So this drop in the utilization of commercial laboratories is an affirmation that testing, which is at an all-time high, is growing at a historic rate. In other words, the laboratories are great, but now we have forms of testing that are much quicker, much better, and we don't have to use the laboratories. But they're there, and they have a great capacity to do the work. As Dr. Burks has been Advising our governors for weeks, we continue to have an excess testing capacity of one million tests per week available for use, and our capabilities are growing every single day, especially with the new tests that are coming onto the market rapidly. As we begin a science-based reopening, we must be extra vigilant in blocking the foreign entry of the virus from abroad. 
Border control, travel restrictions, and other limitations on entry are more important than ever to keep the virus in check and allow Americans to get back to work. The sacrifices our citizens have made in this time of crisis will be remembered, studied, honored, and praised for generations to come. We're really all working together, Democrat, Republican, conservative, liberal. We're all working together. This is not about parties. This is about our country. Now the American people are ready to rise to the occasion once again. They are ready to show the world once more that Americans can defeat any challenger. Together, we will rebuild this land that we love. We will reclaim the magnificent destiny that we share. And we will carry our nation forward to new heights of greatness and glory. I would now like to ask Vice President Mike Pence and Dr. Burks to further explain the new guidelines. I want to thank uh, Dr. Burks. I want to thank Dr. Fauci. And I want to thank really especially a man who has devoted 24 hours a day to his task.